Praise the Lord. Amen. Grace has brought us from a mighty long way. Amen. We thank God for a ministry of music. Amen. Certainly God has been good to us. Amen. But now we want to go into the word of the Lord because that's what we're here for, to go into the word. Uh, Bible said his word is quick and is powerful and is sharp as a two-edged sword. So the word cuts, but the word is also healing, mending. It blesses us. And without the word of God, we all would be messed up. We all would be going astray. But thank God we have the word of God as a compass, as a guide in this life, Lord. The steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord, and he orders us to study his word. He says, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we thank God for his word. Amen. Today we're going to talk about a subject that is somewhat controversial uh, in the church world, especially in the Pentecostal church world. And the subject that we're going to talk about is grace. Now, you would think grace is not, shouldn't be controversial at all, but grace is controversial in the church because some people believe in grace, but they also believe in works. You cannot have grace and works as far as a part of salvation. Amen? So we must understand that grace is grace and works is works. We're not saved by works. If you could work your way to heaven, Jesus Christ would not have had to come die on Calvary's cross, be buried for three days, and then resurrect himself amen, we could do it by works, but we have to be saved by grace. That's why I'm trying to let everybody know you cannot join the church of God. You have to be born into the church. You can join a local assembly, but you cannot join the body of Christ. You have to be born into the body of Christ. That's why the, Jesus said you must be born again of the water and the spirit. So we're talking about grace. Grace is a subject that's almost unfathomable to our minds to really believe and accept and understand the, the, the blessings of grace, the deepness of grace, just how great grace is. That's why you find some churches, they call it Greater Grace Church. And we have a very popular church in Detroit called Greater Grace, because when God saved us, he gave us greater grace. Not only did he give us grace to live, but he gave us grace to live again, amen, to be born again, amen. So we thank God for his grace. Now, at one time, man he has lived in many different dispensations. I mean, different ages, times in which God governs his people. They lived in the dispensation of creation, the dispensation of innocent, the dispensation of conscience, a lot of different dispensations. And eventually we got to the dispensation of the law. When God gave the law to Moses, the lawgiver, amen, Moses brought down the law. The law was designed to teach us the severity of sin, to teach us the danger of sin, to teach us what sin can do, how it can destroy your life, how it can destroy your family. Amen. If you allow sin to get a stronghold in your life, it can destroy you because sin is sin is not something that's good, it's bad. So that's why we as, as, as Pentecostal people, we need to learn how to cry loud and spare not, lift up our voice like a trumpet in Zion and warn God's people of their sins. Amen. In the church world now, sin is very, very seldom preached about. Everybody's preaching about money. Everybody's preaching about prosperity. Everybody's talking about positive image, you know, positive awareness, positive thinking. That's what everybody's talking about. You can have what you say by faith. We're talking about the faith ministry and everything, then the theology of prosperity, all of those things. Some of those things are good. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need to have a positive self image. We need to be financially stable where we can help the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to think right, but that's not going to get you into heaven. You must be born again of the water and the spirit. So therefore, in the dispensation of the law, men were saved by works. They could work their way to heaven. But now we're in the dispensation of grace after 400 years of silence between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen. They call it the intertestament period in which God stopped speaking to the people and to the prophets. And then after 400 years, he began to speak to them again. And that's where the four gospels came in. But technically, the four gospels, they're in the New Testament, but technically they're Old Testament books because people were still saved by work. They had not entered into the dispensation of grace. The dispensation of grace did not come about until the book of Acts. Amen. That brought, that ushered in a new dispensation. In other words, we were saved by faith and not by works. So therefore, it's a new dispensation and it's saved by the grace of God. I don't know about you, but I thank God for grace every morning I get up, every morning. I leave the house every morning. I go whatever I'm going to do. I'm thanking the Lord for grace. I'm thanking the Lord for his bountiful blessing, how he has preserved me, how he has kept me, and above all, how he has saved me. The greatest thing that God has ever done for me is to save me. 
Nothing else compares. Nothing else comes close. Praise the Lord. I thought it was a great blessing when I got married. I thought that was a great blessing. It was. I thought it was a great blessing when I had all my children. It was. I thought it was a great blessing when I did certain things in ministry. It was. But nothing compares to the great blessing that happened when God saved me. Nothing comes close. Amen. I thank God for salvation every day. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, thank God. And because of salvation, the Lord has spared my life. The Lord has used me. The Lord has blessed me. The Lord has protected me in a great way. And I give him all the praise, honor, and glory for that. So we want to talk about grace because grace is highly misunderstood in the Pentecostal ranks and in some other ranks. They think that if you preach grace, 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 then that gives the people a license to sin. If you tell people that their sins are already washed away, then they feel that they can just do whatever they want to do because sins are washed away. That's not what grace teaches. Amen. And then some people preach in, in, in the epistle of John, the Bible said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So some people teach that if you don't confess your sins and you die, you're going to hell. But no, confessing your sins does not save you again confessing your sins puts you back in proper fellowship with god amen the bible said beloved now are we the sons of god sonship never changed you cannot stop being somebody's son your son can break in your house steal your toaster steal your microwave oven and steal your big screen tv off the wall you may be angry you may put him out you may call the police you may put him in the penitentiary but that's still your son regardless of how angry you get what you do and you can say, I disown him. You cannot disown him. That's still your son. Still has your DNA, still has your blood, still has everything. Sonship never changed. That's the same thing. When God saves us, when we're baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, that does not change. The Bible said, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Sonship can never change. And I'm not, that's not a license to sin. That's not saying, well, go out and do what you're going to do. You're still going to be the son of God. You're still going to be the blessed. God's still going to have his arms around you. But you got to understand there's another side to God. The Bible said God is a consuming fire. God is love, God is light, and God is a consuming fire. So therefore, when you think you can just do whatever you want to do, and God's going to be pleased with it, God's going to allow it, you got another thing coming. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Nobody wants to be chased, even for a small season, for a short season. Because when God does it, can't nobody. How many know if, if somebody curses you, somebody put a curse on you, God can lift the curse. But if God curses you, who's going to lift that curse? Nobody. So that's why we have to be in right standing with God. There's a scripture in uh, Timothy, I mean, Titus, the book of Titus, 2 and 12. Amen. We have one of my assistants. Titus 2 and 12. Talking about for the grace of God. Teaching us that design ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. Amen. That's what grace teaches. Grace teaches us to live godly, soberly, and righteously. Grace does not teach you can live any kind of life. You can do this or you can do that. Grace teaches holiness. I want everybody to repeat after me. Grace teaches holiness. So we need to understand, don't think that grace is a license to sin. Let's stop. Let's, stop. Let's grow up in the word of God. Let's stop being so childish and immature to think that the very God of holiness, he's a holy God. We read the Holy Bible. He filled us with the Holy Ghost. What makes us think we can just live any kind of life and God is pleased with it? He's not. And because you are his son, that means he has the right to chasten you whenever he wants to. Amen. Whenever you do wrong, rather. When you do wrong, God has the right to chasten you because you belong to him. Hallelujah. And I thank God that all the time the Lord has chastened me. It was not fun. It was not good when it happened, but it was for my good. Amen. It helped me to live a life that's pleasing to him. It helped me to change my life, to change my thinking. You know, it, I started looking at things a lot differently when God began to deal with me. I can't go around with hatred in my heart. Now, I still don't understand that. How can people go around with hatred in their hearts, hating other people, looking down on despising people? I can't understand that. You know, that's why, you know, there's a certain uh, apostolic organization. They didn't want to really be associated with blacks, so they started their own organization. And now they really don't fellowship with blacks every so often. Every so often they will. They'll come to us. But they don't really invite us to come to them. And there's really a separation. And it's based upon historical racial un undoing. Racial, you know, it's a racial thing. 
It's not not uh, because we're wrong, not because we're in sin. They just have a sense of superiority and they don't like to fellowship with people who they feel superior to. Now, as long as we follow them, it's okay. We can follow them. They'll let us follow them, but they're not going to follow us. Regardless if we have more wisdom, more knowledge, a greater anointing, they're still not going to follow us because they have a sense of superiority and they feel we should be inferior to them. So we got to understand that's not how grace operates. Grace operates in love. Grace operates in forgiveness. God, grace operates in understanding. Amen. Brothers and sisters going around not speaking. God is not pleased with that. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the same church, God is not pleased with that. We shouldn't be going around the church seeing somebody don't speak, seeing somebody we don't like them. We hold it against them because of something that they did. Amen. Suppose God held it against us every time we did something against him. Amen. All of us, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us will be messed up. That's why the Bible says the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching them to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly and righteously in this present world. In other words, we're not waiting till we get to heaven to live, right? You got to live right now if you want to go to heaven. Amen. This is not something that you do once you make it over. If you make it over, we won't have all the limitations we have. We'll have glorified bodies. There'll be no sin in the body. There'll be no sin in heaven. There'll be no sin in paradise. We got to understand God will do away with that. The Bible said, for the former things are passed away. All things have become new. So the grace of God is such a great thing that you cannot earn. That's why the Bible says the grace of God is the unmerited favor of God. That means it's something that you did not earn. Some people think, well, the reason the Lord saved me, I wasn't never really that bad in the first place. You know, the reason the Lord saved me because I heard his word. And I responded to his word in the right way. The reason the Lord saved me, because he knew I had a good heart. I didn't really hate nobody. I didn't really hurt nobody. I was a good person. Well, if you went on that, you could go to heaven based on your own merits. But you cannot, because first of all, we need to understand every person, every person on the face of the earth was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Every person. Amen. Except Jesus Christ. He was not born in sin. Adam and Eve were not born in sin. They were created. Amen. So we need to understand this. But every person on the face of the earth was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So it don't make no difference what you did and what you didn't do. There are some really, really, really nice, moral, distinct people in the world that's never really shacked up, never really committed adultery, never did any of that thing. But because they're not saved, it really doesn't make a difference. See, that's one of the things that we, have. we as people, especially church people, we feel if you're a good person, you're saved. If you know about Jesus, you're saved. If you say a prayer to Jesus every once in a while, you're saved. If you sing in the choir, you're saved. But none of that equates to salvation. Amen. Just knowing about Jesus. I've been knowing about Jesus all my life. I was a pew baby. I, I was raised in the pew. My mother was sanctified. My father went to church. We went to church every Sunday, every Saturday we had to go to church. But you must understand, I still had to get saved. I didn't get saved until I was 22 years old when I got baptized in Jesus' name, filled the Holy Ghost. But up to that point, I knew about Jesus, and I knew how to act in church. I knew how to look in church. I knew what to do in church. I knew what not to do in church. Amen. But I still was not saved. My sins were still attached to my life. Amen. But when I finally found out, I repented. We must understand that grace still requires us to repent. So grace is a new dispensation that's based upon unmerited favor that means unearned favor none of us i don't care if you helped old ladies across the street with the red cross i don't care if you help blind people to the store i don't care if you deliver groceries to the invalids you still must understand you must be born again because we cannot we are not saved by our works the bible said for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself is a gift of god not of works lest any man should boast so when I hear people boasting about what they did and what they didn't do, amen, it really doesn't mean anything to me. Hallelujah. But when I hear people boast and brag about what Jesus did for their life, then I get excited. I can join in with them. I was talking to a sister one time. She was telling me, yeah, you know, she can sing. She, she joined this church. She said, well, I'm the one that brought the anointing. Before me, wasn't no anointing in the church. Wasn't no anointing. I said, sister, you living in, you, you living on dangerous ground. Now you're taking God's place. God is the one that brings the anointing, not you. Who are you to bring an anointing? You might understand Jesus Christ did that. He may have used you in a great way, but he did it. Amen. Please don't ever get carried away thinking that you did something. Amen. The Bible says, in him we live, move, and have our being. 
whatever you do, give God the praise, give him the honor, give him the glory, because that's what grace is. Amen. And grace teaches us to live right. Grace teaches us to do the right thing. Amen. I see so many, many people in church. They leave church. There was a sister who used to go to my church years ago, just a little testimony. She used to go to my church. This sister was anointed. She worked, she sang in the choir. She worked on the tearing committee. She did this, she did that. She paid her tithes, she gave her offering. But, you know, she started getting a little older. She was looking for a husband. Wasn't that many eligible men at our church at that time. So she said, well, I'm going to another church, got a lot more men. And she left for that reason to see if she could find a husband, not realizing that the church she went to had a lot of eligible men, but they had a whole lot of eligible fine women. So her competition was a little greater. So what happened, she never got married. She never got nobody. And I saw a poster of her. Somebody showed me a poster of her in a nightclub on Facebook, sitting at the bar drinking. I said to myself, I know she's trying to use what she got to get what she wants, but that's not God's will. Amen. That's not the grace of God. Grace does not teach that. Then some people say, well, you know, she's covered by grace. It's all right. No, it's not all right. She shouldn't be doing it. The grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching them to deny ungodliness. Amen. And that is ungodly. I know some people going to argue with me. What's wrong with going to the club, having a drink every once in a while, dancing? What's wrong with going to church, going to prayer service every morning? What's wrong with going to prayer service every evening? All of a sudden, we can, make, we can make time to do sin, but we can't quite make time to do that which is righteous, that which is holy. But we must understand grace teaches us if we want to be saved, we got to live a life, not by works, not by works. We're living this way. See, the reason we live saved, not to be saved, but we're living saved because we are saved. And if you are saved, the Bible says a tree is known by the fruit it bears. So if you bear the right fruit, that shows that you are truly saved. That shows that you are living for the Lord. Now, don't be swayed because you say, well, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't cuss. I don't sleep around. I don't cheat on my husband. I don't cheat on my wife. So I must be all right. No. That means you just live a good moral life. But what are you doing for Jesus? What are you doing to enhance the kingdom of God? Where's your sacrifice? Where is your sacrifice? Some people only come to church when they got something to do. So in other words, if they sing in the choir and the choir singing, they come to church, they sing in the choir. But if the choir ain't singing, they ain't coming to church. Amen. Some people come to church if they preaching. If they not preaching, they ain't coming to church. Some people come to church, they can read a scripture. They can't read a scripture, ain't no need in coming. Amen. We must understand serving God is an honor and a privilege. So we have to take the mentality, whatever God would have me to do. The Bible said, whatever you put your hands to do, do it for the kingdom of God and to enhance the kingdom of God. Because you must understand grace has afforded us different gifts and abilities and talents. And we must understand it's time to use our gifts and our talents to enhance, to build up the kingdom of God. So if you have the gift of healing, but you stay home and somebody comes to church sick, needing to be healed, you can't be of service to them. You can't be a blessing to them because you're at home watching Law and Order or watching the football game, basketball game, or whatever you're watching. Amen. So you're not at church. You're not where God can use you. Amen. You're not where God can bless you. And then you must understand, if you're living by grace, you also have to support the ministry of Jesus Christ in the earth. You have to do your part. Amen. Say, well, I ain't got no job. I ain't got no money. You can still come to church and sweep the church up. You can still come to church and and clean out the washroom. You can do whatever you can. If you just don't have any money, you can't, You don't have no money. You can't get blood out of a turnip. But there are some people, there's some people in church that got good job, earn good money, just don't pay tithe. Then they'll tell you, you don't pay no, I don't believe in it. Well, if you don't believe this part of God's word, ain't no sense in believing this part. So I believe this part, but I don't believe this part. God's word, the Bible said, Jesus said, behold, I come in the volume of the book. So therefore God's word does not change. If you believe one, you got to believe it all. Amen. You can't pick and choose. If you can pick and choose, I know some stuff I would put out the Bible. You know, that scripture that said somebody slapped you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. If I had the ability, I'd take that out because, you know, it took me a long time. I still I don't know if I got it now. I don't know if I still got that, ma that master where somebody just walk up and slap me and I turn the other cheek and just say, well, praise God. I, I don't know why you slapped me, but hallelujah. No. You got to, you know, I worked in Cook County Jail for 20 years, so it'll be hard for me to conform to that mentality. But that is the word of God. We can't pick and choose what we like and what we don't like. And that's what a lot of people do. They pick and choose what they like and what they don't like. So we must understand that is not of God. The grace of God teaches us that we should deny God ungodliness, ungodliness. And many of us, all of us know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and preach a whole sermon about sin. 
you know, but we all know what is godly and what is not godly. Amen. Ain't no sense in, you know, people ask you a question. Is it okay to have more than three drinks? Don't ask me that. You know it. You know what the answer is. They just want me to kind of uh, condone what they're doing, you know, knowing that that's, that's not right. Is it okay to live together if you don't have enough money to live on your own and you need somebody to help you with the rent? No. Now it's time to trust God. So a lot of people get grace confused, like grace covers all. And that's what some people say. Grace covers all. Grace covers all your sins. Grace does cover all your sins, but that's still not a license to use sin as a crutch, not a license to do what you want to do. We live in a dispensation of grace. So therefore, God wants us to live a holy and a sanctified life. If you notice in the Old Testament, they talked about backsliders a lot. Backsliders in the Old Testament, because that, that was a covenant that God made with Israel. Israel was in a backslidden state. But in the New Testament, you really don't find the word backslider. You know why? Because God said we're kept by the power of God. If God fills you with the Holy Ghost, then he expects you to live a sanctified and a holy life. He does not expect you to quote unquote backslide because we're kept by his power. All we have to do is surrender to him and let God do what he's going to do. God will keep you. God will bless you. God will bring you out. Amen. Brothers and sisters, don't get thirsty. Don't get thirsty. I know some of you brothers, some of you sisters want to get married because you're pushing 30, you're pushing 40, pushing 50, you just want to get married, and you're willing to kind of take a low stoop to try and get somebody. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge God, and he will direct your path. He'll direct you to the person that he has for you. And then there's another thing. I know people don't want to hear this, and I hope nobody writes me no bad letter, but marriage is not for everybody. Everybody is not going to be married. Everybody's not going to get a husband. Everybody's not going to get a wife. The Bible said, Paul said, I've learned that whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. We just got to be content. If God got a husband for you, that's for you. Whoever God has for you, can't nobody else get them. Amen. Whoever God does not have for you, you can't get them. So we must understand it's vitally important that we live a life of grace. Hallelujah. And you know what grace does? Grace teaches forgiveness. Grace teaches forgiveness. Even if somebody hurt you deeply, even if somebody scarred you, grace teaches forgiveness. Grace teaches love. Amen? Grace teaches love. That's the, that's the gauge of grace. Do you love everybody? Do you love those that you feel despitefully used you? Do you love? See, the only way you're going to really love right is because you must understand you're not better than anybody. See, that's one of the problems in the church. Some people think they're better. You know, you tell you like, oh, mm -mm, I don't have nothing to do with them. No, uh -uh, that, that just ain't my cup of tea. What you mean ain't your cup of tea? What is your cup of tea? What is your cup of tea? That's Jesus Christ's cup of tea. So how are your cup of tea going to be so much better than Jesus Christ's cup of tea? If Jesus Christ came into their life and saved them and blessed them, what makes you think you have a right to think higher of yourself than them? Because they have a shortcoming, they have a fault that you don't have that. You don't have that fault, even though you got another fault. That's why the Bible said, let a man examine himself. How many of you examine yourself in the dispensation of grace? You'll see some stuff that you don't want to see. You'll see some things that's not right. But it, what it does, it should give you a sensitivity to see your brother and sister who may be struggling in a particular area that you can have the spirit of forgiveness to help them to overcome their shortcomings, their faults, and their failures. So we must understand that's what grace teaches. Grace teaches forgiveness. Grace teaches love. Amen. Grace teaches uh, being prayerful to help people. Everybody needs prayer. Everybody needs prayer. Everybody needs help. There are a lot of people in the church world, as we, you know, on our prayer line, we, every Monday, we have Mental Health Monday. Amen. Thank God for Suffolk Bishop uh, Freddie Hill, wife, she's working with us. Amen. And other people, Sister Barbara Garrison's daughter is working with us. Amen. A lot of people are helping with us in this mental health uh, Monday, my daughter, a lot of people, because we're finding out there are a lot of people who are suffering from mental health issues, be it a chemical imbalance, being a psychological disorder, a man being a bipolar, whatever. A lot of people are dealing in a life of stress. Young people are living a traumatized life, much more than it was when I was a child. A man, they live a traumatized life. They see people get shot dead in the street. They see their classmates, eight, nine, 10 years old, get shot dead 
uh, by accident. They see people sitting in the house playing, you know, playing records, sitting around, just get shot dead, just like that. And nobody gives them psychological counseling. Nobody comes in and ministers to them. But you let one white person, one little white person get shot out, shot dead out in Hinsdale or Wilmette someplace. The whole school is full of psychologists trying to help the little white kids. They don't care nothing about the little black kids. Oh, yeah, I said it. I said it. I'll say it again. I know it's true. They ain't helping these little black kids. Yeah, kids, they just say, well, tough enough. You'll be, you be all right. Yeah, they used to that. Amen. That's why they don't put most of the stuff on television. They say, because we don't put it when a lot of black people get shot because we put on news. That ain't news. It happens every day. So that's no news story. We must understand. We can't develop that mentality and say, well, you know, that is right. You know, it does happen so much. It's old news. News is news. Let's be fair. But grace teaches to love even those kind of people. Amen. We got to love those. We got to love those, even those that despitefully use us, even those that you know hates us. Amen. We don't stoop down to their level because they hate us. We can't hate them. We got to love them back in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And please, saints, don't ever get caught up in tick for tack. They don't speak to me. I don't speak to them. They don't love me. I don't love them. They hate me. I hate them. Amen. You, the Bible said, to whom much is given, talking about grace, to whom much is given, much is required. You have the grace of God. God has placed his stamp of approval on your life. God has put your name in the Lamb's book of life. You have eternal life. You will never, you will never dwell in death. Amen. God's going to bring you out. You may go through death, dying, it, going to AR leaks or Gatlin's or whatever, but you will not be there for eternity. Amen. The Lord is coming back. He's going to rapture us up out of the grave. The Bible said, beloved, we're going up to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So therefore, the grace of God even goes beyond the grave. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for his grace and his mercy and his understanding. Hallelujah. Just thank God for the blood. And so we must understand grace teaches love, forgiveness, understanding, and grace teaches others. The key word in Christianity is others. We have to help others first above ourselves amen and we cannot be uh respect of persons oh i'll help that person but what about this uh -uh. oh i can't do them no i don't have nothing to do with them and then think they're in proper standing with god god never did that god never said well i'll save this person but i ain't gonna save this person they just too mean they just too ugly they just too nasty they just too vicious they too vile they're too vulgar hey man you'd be surprised how many pastors used to be vulgar how many pastors used to be mean and cantankerous how many pastors used to live a life that certainly was not pleasing to god but when god touched them changed your life you can't even look at them now because their life has totally changed a whole lot of saints used to be real bad real bad but that's who god looks for i mean no god likes to save sinners god didn't come here just to save the righteous he came here to see us save sinners he came here to bless us that's why he gave us the dispensation of grace hallelujah and one day the Lord is coming back to receive his church. He's coming back to receive everybody that's a participant of grace, everybody that's moving in a great way. We thank God for his grace. We thank God for his mercy. Hallelujah. I mean, God is just moving in a great way. I've seen people, you know, the Apostolic House of Prayer is known for dealing with drug addicts, alcoholics, ex-inmates, ex-offenders, you know, and just to see how God changes their life, how God molds their life, how God takes them from being a sinner to a saint, hallelujah, how God can bless them. The many of the assistant ministers at our church, God has brought them through drugs, alcohol, penitentiaries, everything, glory, hallelujah. I wish I had time to have them come on and testify where God brought them from, how God brought them through, but God brought them out of, now their husbands, their wives, they're living a life, they're working, they're, they're good people, bringing their money home, taking care of their families, supporting the church of Jesus Christ, paying their tithe, giving their offering, hallelujah, raising their children right in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And it's all because of grace. It's all because there's a principle of reaping and sowing. Hallelujah. You do right, God will do right with you. And the Bible said, if you draw nigh to Christ, he'll draw nigh to you. That's why I'm really amazed every morning and every evening we have our prayer line. And some of the people on our prayer line, that's what we call going to church because we can't go into our own sanctuary right now. So we call it going to church. We have saints now, we have saints in the church right now that have perfect attendance. They have not missed not one church service, not one. Amen. Some of them haven't even overslept. Praise the Lord. And that's more than what I can say. Praise the Lord. But God, God has blessed them. 
in a great way. Be why? Because they have a hunger and thirst after righteousness. The Bible says, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So if you have a hunger and thirst for righteousness, God will bless you. God will fill you. God will bless you. Hallelujah. If you have somebody in your family that's not saved, all you have to do is pray. You know, say, Lord Jesus, I need you to pray. I need you to bless them rather. I need you to save them. I can't save them. Only God can do it. Amen. Let's be careful how we pray. Let's pray right so God can respond. Stop going around thinking that you can bind demons and all. Only Jesus can bind demons. You can pray, but Jesus has to do the binding. I bind you up, devil, in the name of Jesus. No, you can't bind nobody up. You need to just pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you to bind this spirit up. Hallelujah. I need you to do this. Jesus does it. Nobody here, nobody on the air, on the prayer line, on the Zoom line, on the Facebook, nobody has ever healed not one person, not one. I can't even heal the split ends on my wife's hair. Amen? Nobody else can. All these people on television talk about what they're doing. They're not doing it. Jesus, if, they, if anybody is getting healed for real, Jesus is doing it. Amen? Let's give God all the praise. It's dangerous to step in and try and take God's glory from him and to think that you're doing it. Hallelujah. This is the Lord's, the Bible says, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. I don't want none of God's glory. Hallelujah. I don't want God to punish me because I'm taking his glory. Amen. The Bible said, whatsoever you do, whatsoever you do, I don't care what it is, baptism, laying on of hands, uh, coming against spirits, casting out demons, whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus. In other words, we have to give Jesus the praise, the honor, and he has to do the work. Don't you know, if you don't, if Jesus don't do it, you can pray over some demons for 27 years. Ain't nothing going to happen. Because Jesus is the only one that can do it. Demons are not afraid of us. Demons are not intimidated by us. Amen. Demons don't back down from us. Demons are respectful of Jesus Christ and his word. Nothing else, not you. That's why the disciples who God had given an apostolic anointing gave them power. When they tried to cast the demons out, they came down, couldn't do it. Then they asked the Lord, say, Lord, how come we couldn't cast these demons out? Jesus said, this can come out only by fasting and praying. Amen. So there's some spirit. You got to be fasting and praying and let God do what he's going to do. Hallelujah. And God, how many know God will stand behind his word? He said, my word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish where I send it. So wherever you, whatever God does, He's going to stand behind his word. So let's begin. As we begin to pray, let's pray the word. Hallelujah. Pray the word over your situation. Pray the word over your condition. And above all, when we pray, let's pray. Ask the Lord to give us an extra anointing of love. Amen. The Bible said, by this will men know that ye are my disciples, if you love one another. Grace teaches love. Grace teaches unity. Amen. We're all a part of grace. We're not under the law. That's why the Bible says, in the last days, there's going to come a great falling away. Now, you know what? A lot of Christian people think that falling away is when you stop coming to church. That's not the falling away that God is talking about. Because some people fall away and then come back uh, two, three years later and then be some of the best saints in the whole church. They just had to come to themselves like the prodigal son. The prodigal son was eating uh, in the hog pen, eating corn husk. The Bible said then he came to himself. Said, I'm going back home. My father's servants live better than what I'm doing. He went home and God received him. I mean, his father received him. Amen. The Bible says he kissed him, he kissed him, and kissed him. Gave him the robe, gave him the ring, killed the fatty calf. Amen. Because God is a forgiving God. So we must understand, hallelujah, whatever you're doing, give God the praise. Give him the glory. Amen. I don't care how far you fall. I don't care what messed up, what happened. God will bless you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Everybody, if you have somebody in your family that's backslidden, you have somebody in your family that stopped walking with the Lord, not going to church, getting distracted because they're in a relationship that they think is going to be something, just keep praying for them. Every Thursday, we have what you call uh, backsliding Thursday. Thursday, we pray. Our focus prayer, our focus of prayer you know, every Thursday, Thursday morning, and Thursday evening, our focus of prayer is praying for backsliders, praying for people to come to themselves to get back in their right position, get back in their right place. The Bible says, and talk, this is even dealing with the dispensation of grace. This is an eternal scripture. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. People who don't fear God, they're a fool. Amen. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. 
So I'm not fearing it. I don't know. Then I don't even know if I believe in God. Well, that's not hurting God. God is still going to be God whether you believe in him or not. Hallelujah. The Bible said, what if some don't believe? So that make God's word of non effect. Say, God, no, let God be true in every man a liar. Hallelujah. So somebody telling me they don't know if they believe in God. It don't hinder my belief. I believe in him 100%. Trust him. Hallelujah. I've never, since I've been saying, I ain't never said, God, are you really up there? Because I'm going through some stuff. Lord, I know most of the stuff I went through is my fault. See, that's what some folks need to realize. You're going through what you're going through because it's your fault. And if it's not your fault, God's going to bring you out. God's going to bring you through. Hallelujah. Sometimes the adversary, we blame the stuff on God. We should be blaming it on the devil. That's who did it. So God is going to bless us in a great way. Thank God for grace. Thank God for his mercy. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy. That's why we ain't got to worry about nobody running up, stabbing us in the back, what folks talk about us, put us down. Don't worry about that. Hallelujah. Because goodness and mercy got your back. All the other, all the rest of the thing you put on the whole armor of God has the frontal protection, has the helmet, has the feet, but in your back ain't really nothing because goodness and mercy got your back. People trying to talk about you, put you down. That's all right. You know, I've been pastoring a long time. To me, it's been a long time, about 35 years. And I think people have left the church at some time or another and left the church, talked about the pastor, you know, but then when they get sick, when they get in con bad condition, they call the pastor up. I'm like, calling me well where's your other pastor but he don't he don't come to the hospital to visit folks well why are you in the church where well, the pastor won't come and visit you but he has a ecclesiastical staff that'll come well call them pastor now i want you to come you know use me as a surrogate pastor that i'm supposed to be so hard up that i go to the hospital and pray and you know what most of the time i do most of the time i will go you know why because that's what god called me to do amen and i'm operating in love you know i'm not trying to get him to come back to the church I'm just trying to show them that the real love of Jesus surpasses what is the norm. God will bless you to do that which is not the norm. Hallelujah. So therefore, if you got loved ones or relatives that despitefully use you, just keep loving them. Keep treating them right. Amen. Praise the Lord. You might not be able to hang out with them. You might not be able to go to lunch with them. But you can at least treat them with love and kindness when you do see them. Amen. And bless them. Bless their names and give God, ask God to bless them. Let me tell you, I'm going to leave you this, and then I'll be out of town, I do believe. Uh, can't really see this clock. But let me tell you something. If you really want to be a blessing to somebody, you really want to overcome a spiritual stronghold, and you're really dealing with the subject, situation of un unforgiveness towards that person, if you really want to forgive them, just start praying for them sincerely. Not no love, prayer like, bless them, Lord. You know, pray for them sincerely. And don't get caught up in strange prayers. You know, uh, one of the members of the church was telling me about somebody, that this lady, she's supposed to be a powerful lady. She prays against saints. You know, Lord, don't bless them till they do this. Lord, don't touch them till they do this. Lord, uh, you know, freeze up their wounds. Don't let them have no babies. I told them that is witchcraft. You don't pray like that. So first of all, you're stepping into the role of God. God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I shall repay, not you. So therefore, we should never pray against somebody. Pray for them. Pray the Lord, you know they're in bondage. You know they're in sin. You know they're not singing right. Bless them, Lord. Touch them right now, Lord. Give them clarity of thought and speech, Lord. Bless them. That's the way we should pray as saints of God living in the dispensation of grace. We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. The Bible said, for by grace are you saved through faith and not, not of yourself is the gift of God not of works we're not saved by our works not of works lest any man should boast that's why some people take credit take a lot of credit for their being saved well you know i did this and i did that you ain't did nothing god may have done it through you but god did it don't ever take credit for what god is doing don't ever go around thinking you've done such a great thing don't ever go around trying to tell people what you used to do the most saddest thing in the world is to hear a preacher talk about what he used to do what you doing now? I had, you might not be old. You might not be uh, strong enough to do, but you can still pray. You can still talk about what God, how God bless you, how God used you. Don't go around bragging what you, I used to do this, I used to do that. You know, I'm like, oh, Lord, what you doing now? Like Janet Jackson had that song, What Have You Done For Me Lately? That's what God is saying. You know, I know I'm saying I ain't supposed to be quoting Janet Jackson, but most of y'all know you listen to her anyway. 
Amen. But what have you done? That's what God is saying. What have you done for me lately? What you doing now? Well, I can't walk too good. You can still pray. You don't need to, you don't need to walk to pray. Amen. Well, I can't hear that well. You don't need to hear much to pray. Can't see that good well. You don't need to see clearly how to pray. You can just pray. Ask the Lord to bless you in a great way. Because we're living in a dispensation of grace. And this is next to the last dispensation. So God is getting ready to come back real soon. This pandemic that's happening, what we're going through right now, the pandemic affecting God shut down this whole earth. He shut down the whole world with this pandemic. Shut it down. Show you the power of God. And people talking about they don't believe in God. How are you not going to believe in God? Which, who you believe in? You know, Bob Dylan had a song out in the 70s that said, Bob Dylan even said, he said, you got to believe in something. Might well believe in Jesus. Amen. Because that's the only one that has power. Nobody else has power. All these other people talking about this and that and all this. Hallelujah. I was talking to a brother. He was telling me, hey, Islam is the oldest religion in the world. I said, no, it ain't. He said, yes, it is. It came out before Christianity. I said, no, it did not. He said, how you know? I said, because the Bible said we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Christianity was before the world was even created. Hallelujah. So therefore, Islam cannot be the oldest religion in the world. Jesus Christ is the oldest religion in the world. Before the foundation of the world, that's when God chose us. How I many know, realize when you was out there in the world, getting high, doing what you want to do, God had already chosen you before the foundation of the world, that he would only let you go so far, he only let you do so much because he's going to reel you in because you belong to him. And Jesus said, that was the father's given me, I've lost none. If he didn't lose them then, he's not going to lose you now. Amen. I want everybody to believe the word. Jesus Christ said, I've lost none. Now, do you believe he's telling the truth or do you think he's lying? I know he's telling the truth. He said he's lost none. He's lost none. He said, well, what about so-and-so? -and -so? You don't know where so-and-so going. Stop worrying about whether so-and-so go to heaven or hell. Just make sure you go to heaven. Make sure you're living right. Hallelujah. Let God take care of what God's going to do. You take care of what you need to do. And that's to live right. Stand up right before God and give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the glory. And let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen. It's five minutes to... Right now, we're going to have a word of prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, we thank you for blessing us, Lord, to be assembled over the air. Lord, we ask you to touch somebody's heart and mind, Lord. Help them, Lord, to have a deep appreciation for your grace, Lord. Help them be a recipient of your grace, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray that you save somebody right now that's listening, needs to be saved, needs to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in the tongues of the Spirit of God, give utterance. Lord, bless them right now as never before. Let your spirit move as never before. Somebody is sick. Somebody is going through having a hard time. Bless them right now. Oh, God, we know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Lord, we ask you to bless right now in the matchless name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to steal this epidemic. Lord, protect your people. Let your blood cover right now. Lord, we ask you to protect your people, Lord, from the racist police, these white racist police, Lord. Hallelujah. They won't kill any more black brothers and young children or anything like that, Lord. Bless them as never before. Oh, God, we know that you're able to do it, Lord. Bless right now. Lord, bless the good police, Lord, that's doing an excellent job. Strengthen and encourage them. Bless them as never before. Lord, we ask you to bless our governor, Lord. Touch him right now. Strengthen and encourage him. Bless our mayor. Bless her, Lord. Strengthen and encourage her. Bless, uh, what's his name? Oh, Trump. Uh, uh, Lord, amen. Praise the Lord. Bless Trump. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord, and by faith, we believe that what we're praying for is going to be done. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And by faith, we receive it as done. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Right now, is there anybody that wants to be 